Let's take a look at the Bogleheads 3 fund portfolio and how it would have performed if we invested $1,000 per month for the last 30 years. And before we jump into those numbers, let's just cover the basics. What is the Boglehead 3 fund portfolio? So that way we're all on the same page. As the name implies, it's a portfolio that uses only three funds to get exposure to three asset classes. And those asset classes are total US equity market, global equities, and then bonds. Now for the bond portion of the portfolio, it doesn't get exposure to global bonds. And that's because of, well, number one, there is no fund that combines both global bonds and US bonds. And number two, it's generally accepted that the risk return profile and the diversification benefits of global bonds, quite simply, isn't worth it or isn't that valuable. In other words, global bonds bring a lot of risk into the portfolio and not really much in the way of returns. So for that reason, U.S. bonds are used in the Bogleheads 3 fund portfolio. Now, um, in that 3 fund portfolio, there can actually be a lot of variation. And that has to do with the asset allocation. And I'm talking about how much you're allocating between stocks and bonds. That's something that you need to decide based on your own risk tolerance and the time horizon for your investment. But also, what is going to be your allocation between global equities and the United States equities? Right? If you're using efficient frontier modeling, and that looks at the historical risk and return of an asset class, uh, basically it's going to be pointing you all to U.S. equities. If you're using some type of forecasting like the CAPE ratio, which has been shown to have a very significant correlation with five-year returns, that's a whole other topic. But there are some forecasting models out there for asset classes. That's what I'm trying to uh, point out. It might have you going all towards, or not all towards, but significantly towards foreign equities because they've been underperforming for so long and at a relative valuation, they're a lot cheaper than US equities. Some people just say, well, shit, I don't know. I'm just gonna go 50% uh, within, my, uh, within my allocation to equities. I'm just gonna go 50% foreign or global uh, or in 50% US equities. So what this kind of highlights actually is a caveat of investing and that is it is very, very complex. You see just how complex investing is with three funds here. We got to decide between stock and bond allocation. We got to decide between US equities and global equity. So why the three fund portfolio? Well, A, it's simple. And B, um, it's low fee. It can be implemented for low fee. Let's just go back to simple because I didn't really touch on that. But one thing you'll find and the numbers support this wholly, is that simple portfolios do just as well as more complex portfolios. You see a lot of people out there, advisors, uh, robo-advisors will say, hey, I'm gonna have 5% to small value, 5% to mid cap value, 10% to large value, and then I'm gonna go you know, 5% to Pacific, uh, Pacific region small value, right? And then any, you end up with this fund that's got like 12 to 20 holdings in it, and ultimately over the long period of time, it does no better than a simple three fund portfolio. And also it can be implemented with low fees, right? So you can get exposure to each one of these asset classes, US equities, global equities, and bonds uh, for just a few basis points. And when I'm saying basis point of one basis point is 0.01%. So in the, in the finance world, a basis point is 0.01%. 10 basis points would be 0.10% or 10 BIPs. Um, just some kind of terminology there, but you can get these, you can get exposure to these asset classes for very low fee through Vanguard ETFs or mutual funds. Schwab has some very low fee funds as well as so does Fidelity. And there might be some others out there that I'm, uh, that I'm not mentioning and I'm not endorsing either one of the, any one of these, but I'm just letting you know, those are brokers that do have funds with low fees to represent these asset classes. Another thing is too, on the simplicity, going back to simplicity, if you are tax loss harvesting, because you've only got three funds in here, it makes tax loss harvesting very, very, very easy, right? So you're not constantly struggling to find a replacement for one of your holdings that you sold. Uh, it's just, there's only three funds and you can easily come up with your alternatives for that. All right, so let's look at the meat and potatoes here, and that's how is the three fund portfolio done? But before that, we got to establish, you know, how are we allocating within that three fund portfolio? So what I did is I used a U.S. stock market, and I'm going with an 80-20 allocation here. So 80% stocks, 20% bonds. Um, you know, I think that's just kind of in the middle here. 
where a lot of people looking at this video are going to be allocating. Some people might be going 60% equities, 40% bonds. Some people might be going more conservative than that. You can adjust it based on your own needs. But for this model, uh, we're gonna look at 80% equities, 20% bonds. That's going to be 50% US stock market, 20% global stock market. So excluding the US, that's our international exposure. I don't know if I said 20, but I meant 30. I can't remember what I just said. 50% uh, US, we can see the numbers here. 50% US, 30% global equities, 20% bonds. All right, and we're gonna start this back 1991, January 1991, January 1st, 1991, through December 31st, 2021. It's actually January 2022 that I'm recording this, uh, but our last whole month of complete data is through the end of 2021, December 2021. We're gonna start with putting $1,000 in there we are gonna contribute $1,000 per month. Let's see how this portfolio is done. We can come down here, we can see the chart, and we can see that our total portfolio final balance would be $1,656,000. Uh, in this case, our compound annual growth rate is irrelevant here because this thing is just calculating it based on the amount we're contributing each month, you know, and the value that that's adding to the portfolio. So. This number is not accurate uh, using this model, but the time-weighted rate of return and the money-weighted rate of return is, right? So uh, the time-weighted rate of return, 8.77%, money-weighted 8.35%. These could vary slightly based on the dates each month that you make the deposit. So we can just call it 8.5% annually here from this 80-20 portfolio. And then we can see the drawdown, drawdown, 43.83% during the global financial crisis. Uh, let's just see if it has a drawdown recovery on here. Where's drawdown? I'd like to see this underwater period, right? Yeah, so from November 2007 to February 2009 is when you had that great financial, uh, we had the great financial crisis. You recovered by April 2011 and your portfolio was underwater for three years and six months. Interestingly, that was a lot faster than the dot-com bubble in the early 2000s. You recovered faster from that great financial crisis, probably because there was so much government intervention to kind of stave off that financial crisis during that period of time. Uh, let's just see if we can come back to it here. The portfolio's sharp ratio, I like to go to the sharp ratio, that's a measure of risk and return, 0.57. So let's just compare this to something else here because Vanguard has their life strategy fund. Uh, Vanguard has a life strategy fund, which you can buy and just put all the money into it for an 80-20 portfolio. And I think that one does actually have some global bonds in it. So let's just put it uh, benchmark, specify ticker. We'll just go VASGX, right? right there and we'll put a logarithmic chart on it you can see they they've done about the same and interestingly that three fund portfolio has slightly outperformed the vanguard's life strategy fund that's very interesting I, and i'm not exactly sure why i know this thing is pretty close to it in terms of u.s equity and global equity split so yeah <laughs> I, I must say that I am relatively shocked here by this. Uh, I, I thought it was—I actually thought it was going to be basically about the same, but you can see the three fund portfolio out, outperforms Vanguard's life strategy fund here. That said, if you just wanted to put your money in it and not even have three funds, a life strategy fund would be for you. Uh, and okay, this this actually is not over 30 years. It did adjust to 1995. So. Let's just wrap this up here. We'll take the life strategy fund out of there. We'll just hit analyze portfolio. And the big thing I wanna take away here is that over this time period, you put in $361,000, right? Let's just pull up the calculator. You're putting in $1,000 a month. 12 times 30 is gonna be 360, plus there's that $1,000 you started with. You put in 361,000, and now your final balance is 1,656,000. That is the power of compounding returns at 
annually. And the important thing here is that you keep buying in on the drawdowns. So yeah, that is how you would have done if you invested $1,000 per month into a Boglehead's three fund portfolio. If you are looking for uh, if you're looking for any portfolio, you're looking to get into investing or, you know, I think a lot of people are looking to simplify their portfolio. And I'll tell you this from my own experience, a lot of people getting into investing and they're like, okay, they start breaking things out. I'm going to do 10% to small value, 10% to Pacific small value, 10% to emerging markets, small value, you know, and then just start breaking it up. And then after a few years, they're like, you know, this just isn't worth it anymore. I'm not seeing the outperformance based on all these little factors. I'm just going to go with a simple three fund portfolio. Uh, I think that is a very savvy and sound financial decision if that's you and that's the boat you're looking into. So the bottom line and where I was going with it, three fund portfolio is a totally realistic, totally viable portfolio strategy that quite frankly, given its simplicity and its low cost, quite frankly, is going to outperform a lot of other portfolios at the same allocation that try to break things up into a lot of different levels. So that's my two cents on it. What do you guys think of the Bogleheads 3 Fund Portfolio? Are you investing in a Bogleheads 3 Fund Portfolio? Let me know in the comments below.